Good morning. And welcome to worship, whether you are gathering with us here on South Main Street or whether you are worshiping with us from home live or later in the week. It's great to have you with us. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. Our opening lesson <clears throat> is an instructional poem in which wisdom is personified as an attribute of God's character and a virtue to be sought and possessed. Lady Wisdom act actively seeks out those as yet unformed in character and strives to gain their attention, for she offers to lead them into the way of life and goodness. Those who scoff or refuse her instruction court calamity, but those who listen will dwell secure. This is a reading from the book of Proverbs. <clears throat> Wisdom cries out in the street. In the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand, and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when the distress and anguish, anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, and I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Would have none, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure, and will live at ease without dread of disaster. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. We will read Psalm 19 responsively. The heavens declare the glory of God. One day tells its tale to another. Although they have no words or language, their sound is gone out into all lands. In the deep, has he set a pavilion for the sun? It 
It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. By them also is your servant enlightened. Who can tell how often he offends? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. A reading from the book of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening as fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. 
He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called a crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Three weeks ago, we heard Peter's confession of faith as told in John's gospel. This week, we hear Mark's version. When Peter says, you are the Messiah. And John, the stumbling block is Jesus' invitation to eat his flesh given for the life of the world. And in Mark 2, there is scandal, but it has to do with Jesus' own words about his coming death. And here, Peter stumbles over Jesus' words. But in Mark, Jesus is anointed, which is the meaning, the definition of Messiah. He is anointed only on the way to the cross. And we too are anointed in baptism with the sign of the cross when the minister places a hand on a person's head, marking the forehead with the sign of the cross, saying you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked marked as Christ's own forever. Forever. Jesus connects his death to baptism. And he invites us through these waters to give up our own freedom and suffer vulnerability as he did for the sake of the other and for all of creation. His releasing... Or his self-emptying here. He gives up on his own needs and his wants and his desires. And in doing so, it opens him to God's divine will. God's desire to bring healing and wholeness and new life to all. But too often, too often we see freedom as somehow our own selfish choice, rather than a choice to reflect Jesus and the way of love. We've come to see loving our neighbor through mask wearing and vaccinations as an infringement on personal freedom and rights, rather than loving our neighbor. We turn the very gifts of God into something to selfishly keep for ourselves, like storing up manna in the desert. But our daily bread, the very gifts of God, what we need to be fed and sustained with, and the science to be safe, are given to us each and every day. And, beloveds, these gifts, they are enough, even when we see them through scarce eyes. They're enough for the sake of each one of us. They are enough for the sake of our neighbors and all of creation, and they are given to us to be used and to be shared. But far too often we we turn in on ourselves. We think we are smarter than God's will and desires for us. We think what we decide or what we do is our business, it's my right. It's my freedom. But sin, 
lovelessness, justicelessness, no gentleness. Beloveds, these things are never private. Sin is personal, but it always has public or political ramifications because our individual sin impacts the way that we structure society. And because sin has a social impact, there is no such thing as personal or private salvation. We cannot privatize God's gift or word. Every decision we make impacts us all by the things we have done and by the things we have left undone. In spite of all of this selfish sin, God washes and welcomes us in the life-giving waters of baptism. In the past two weeks, we have welcomed three children of God into those waters through the sacrament of new birth. You didn't sleep through those baptisms in Sunday morning worship. Because they were held outdoors in the beauty of creation due to the pandemic. Dempsey Williams Acoin, Liam Lawrence Spira, and his cousin Benjamin James Strouch were all baptized in water, all anointed with oil and sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked as Christ's own forever. Under the sign of the cross, we prayed for those who received the sacrament of new birth with the following words that are a reminder for us that we too are anointed, anointed to carry the very cross of Christ on each of our foreheads. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send them into the world to witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. And grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Beloved, it's that sign of the cross that I've traced three times in the last two weeks, the sign of the cross that was traced on your forehead at your baptismal anointing, and perhaps even the sign of the cross that you traced this morning coming into worship, or maybe you will trace it following receiving communion, or at the naming of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is a gesture. Yes, it is a simple symbol. Yes. For some of you, it's a little bit too high churchy. Yes. But it is a gesture that we place on our very bodies. It is a cross reminder that we follow. And it is an echo of your baptism. And it is an echo of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. You each are marked with the cross of Christ forever. As followers of Jesus, as anointed children of God, marked with that cross, we follow Jesus in the way of love. But often we too stumble. We get lost. We doubt. We spend our time wondering and worrying. And I wonder, I wonder if we are comfortable followers who, like Peter, stumble over the harsh words of Jesus, selfishly seeing the freedoms and sustaining gifts given as ours to do with what we please. Or do we live in and under and through that cross that we received in baptism and that we make on our very bodies? You see, Jesus asked those disciples, but he also asked each one of us, who do you say that I am? It's not a question that we get asked very often. It's a question that I'm going to fold into confirmation and welcome classes. Who do you say that I am? And our answer, 
ultimately guides and is reflected in all of our actions, in all of our speech and our behavior as people of faith. Yes, we are individuals, each one of us blessed with unique gifts and skills, but more importantly, we are claimed. We are claimed and named as a greater body, as the very body of Christ, who was anointed like each of us, fellow children of God gathered as the church to love and serve the world. We celebrate this individuality in unity when together we confess our sins and when we confess our faith during the creed here in worship. When together we say, I confess and I believe we are connected to the cross of Christ, the cross we carry as we follow Jesus, as we live in and out of the way of love, as we move beyond false prophets and noise and all of the distractions of the world that tempt us into being selfish and sinful. Beloveds, picking up one's cross is not about individual martyrdom or following a prescriptive set of rules. Because we, all of us who are claimed and named, we who are anointed, we carry that cross on our very bodies and we don't carry it ourselves. Jesus carries it for us.
we profess our faith with the whole church using a responsive version of the Nicene Creed as used in the Church of England. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and hung on Christ. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He is ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds with the Father and the Son. He has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church. That is as a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy, Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. Restore forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy. Protecting God. You desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet to the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Transforming God. You announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy. Forming God, you gather this community together. Shape our communal life that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we give you thanks for first responders, especially those who are reliving trauma from 20 years ago. And we ask your blessing and comfort for all who grieve this day, especially those around our nation on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I invite the congregation to be seated and Don and Sandy to come forward and gather at the font. In your bulletins is a renewal of vows. You are invited to follow along with us. You could stand on this side and now, do we have this right? Bride side, groom side? If you want to face one another, that would be wonderful. If you want to hold hands, that would be awesome as well. What? Don's laughing if you haven't figured that out. We have come together in the presence of God to give thanks with Don and Sandy for 60 years of married life, to ask God's forgiveness for all that has been amiss, to rejoice together and ask for God's blessing. As our Lord Jesus Christ was himself a guest at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, so through his spirit he is with us now. Marriage is a gift of God in creation and a means of God's grace. It is given that a husband and wife may comfort and help each other, living faithfully together in times of need as well as in plenty, in sadness and in joy, in sickness and in health. It is given that with delight and tenderness they may know each other in love. In marriage, a couple belong together and live life in the community. It is a way of life created and hallowed by God that all should honor. Therefore, we pray with them that strengthened and guided by God, they may continue to fulfill God's purpose for their life together. I invite you now to recall the vows that you made at your wedding. Don, you have taken Sandy to be your wife. Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others to be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I do. Sandy, you have taken Don to be your husband. Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health and forsaking all others to be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Let us pray. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of man and woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing upon this man and this woman. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their health, in their death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of God be with you always. You may now share a sign of peace with one another. That's peace. A few brief announcements, although following the renewal of 60 years of married life, there are no announcements. <laughs> we give thanks for, for all relationships this day, um, but it is always good for those of us that have been married far shorter than that to be reminded that, uh, that it's possible. Um, so con blessings and congratulations. We will gather at 10.30 online for a coffee hour today. The link to Zoom is in your weekly e-news. If you're not getting that e-news, please give a shout out to the church office and we'll get you on that list. Also, we will um, distribute the Eucharist in the courtyard as we do during good weather immediately following worship. I misspoke last week when I said that Wolfboro Reads was starting last week. It's starting this week. Tuesday afternoon, we're gathering via Zoom. That information is also on the calendar and in your e-news. I know the books are just now arriving, 
And so this week, we, it's a very short book uh, that will probably only take the following two weeks to discuss. So this week, we'll gather. We haven't seen it, each other for a while. We'll talk about books we'd like to read um, moving into the end of the fall and over the winter. And you'll get a chance to meet Pastor Donna, who is the interim, new interim pastor at First Congregational Church, Wolfboro. So she's looking forward uh, to meeting many of you, and all are welcome to join um, with that. Let us now listen to some beautiful music as we receive our offering. Plates are at the door, or you may um, drop your offering via the Internet or here physically at church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return, through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, he are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in Christ. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine 
gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. It is in Christ who belong to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite those of you who are worshiping with us at home to pray the prayer for spiritual communion. We will uh, pray individually the prayer, the post-communion prayer, of following receiving the Eucharist. I invite you to pray that prayer individually. We will not be saying it here in worship this morning. God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you all now and forever.
bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.